Okay, I'm here with Paul French to talk about uh, Carl Crow and advertising in China, and if the audience can keep the uh, noise down. Uh, so, Paul, tell me, uh, Carl Crow uh, saw it all before? He saw everything. He saw everything in the late 1920s. He saw everything in the 30s and everything that everyone is trying to do now. And they believe they're all pioneers and so brave and breaking new ground. It's, it's, it's all just old history. So t tell me about Tom Doctoroff wrote this book about China. How is it, wh what, what did he claim? And, uh... Well, that was a funny book because he talked about uh, some of the stuff that he'd done here with J. Walter Thompson in the last kind of 10 or 15 years. And, and, and some of them were very interesting. Or, I mean, one that always springs to my mind was Buick, which, of course, you know, for those of us outside America, is a very funny brand anyway. But, I mean, it's a very strange car brand. And he claimed that, you know, he, he had been able to relaunch the Buick brand in China, and this was great, and he'd been able to recreate this brand. But, I mean, back in the late 1920s, like something like 1928, Carl Crow got the contract for Buick, and he did the campaign for them. And one of the things that Dr. Off and the other advertising people claim is that, you know, the way to sell cars was show a woman driving the car. So even though men pay for the car, even though men actually buy the car, show a woman driving it and that will, you know, increase the sales. Um, but you can look back at adverts that Carl Crow did in the early 1930s for Buick, on contract for Buick, that show a sexy Chinese woman, you know, the classic Shanghai with a chipao and all the rest of it. Now that Shanghai Tang obviously have reinvented that style, everyone's familiar with it. You know, and he did that in the early 1930s. So, I mean, you know, it's 70, if not 80 years late anyway. So what's, what's the big lesson that we can learn from Carl Crow? Well, the lesson you can learn is that the idea that uh, Chinese people are interested in foreign products, the idea that they're interested in international sort of ideas, is nothing new whatsoever. There was a slight interruption between 1949 and about 19, the early 1980s. But basically, this has always been going on. And the one lesson you can take, which I think is the best one, is if you are here and trying to sell something and you're losing money doing it, which a lot of people are, don't worry about it, because probably your grandfather did exactly the same thing. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much.